What is going on guys? I want to talk about my thoughts on the Pacific Theater. We've had more than a week now to get a full feel of this really anticipated update. I want to talk about the good, the bad, and everything else in between. Nice thing is, in my opinion, there's a lot more good to talk about. DICE did a very good job, really, from the trailer onward so far to really deliver an epic experience. For me, when it comes to video games, I wouldn't say it's one specific thing that will make or break a game for me, but it's the combination of things and how they all work together. And when you put it all together with the Pacific Theater so far, it definitely is noticeable that the parts added in the Pacific Theater have complemented the new content and not been something that's been game breaking and throwing everything out of balance. So let's take for example the Katana. Who would have thought adding basically a mini form of the Trench Raider back in BF5 would be so well balanced and still really fun and effective to play with at the same time. By keeping out additional armor from this new one hit kill melee weapon but adding more frequent pickups all while doing subtle things like increasing your health to max after every kill in my opinion has made this new pickup one of the most fun features in battle 5 right now i can go on brief moments of rampage pulling the katana out but at the same time it doesn't feel like it's overshadowing things like the gunplay which i still think is a real solid pillar for battle 5 it's honestly refreshing to see how well balanced and fun these new pickups have been. I mean, when I jump on the battlefield, I am looking for these pickups, and that's how effective and fun they can be. It's just not like a new gimmick on the battlefield, which is nice to experience like the, the first moment it comes out, but over time, you eventually lose interest in it. This is not going to be the case for these battle pickups. I think a lot of people are going to want these in the other maps that we've had for the vanilla version of Battle for 5. So, um, yeah, it, definitely really fun stuff to be using. But let's talk about something else here now. How about the maps? Like, it was pretty eye-opening when I was hearing the Game Changers talking about the maps before the rest of the community had a chance to play them. I was hearing things like Iwo Jima as the best breakthrough map ever. And even though Breakthrough has only been around since Battle 1, it was still pretty eye-opening when I heard that. But after playing Iwo Jima, I would have to agree. Iwo Jima is definitely the best breakthrough map that's been out there. It is excellent in my opinion. Everything from the beach landings to the continual push upwards and getting moments to fight in the caves of Iwo Jima to having the ascent on top to capture the final territory is an absolutely epic experience. And that's just Iwo Jima. Let's talk about the other map that came out, Pacific Storm, which isn't all too bad either. What's interesting too about Pacific Storm is I was a bit concerned hearing the Game Changers' first impressions of the map and how the thick shrubbery on this map can be used to blend players in really well and make them appear hidden. And given how the visibility has been an issue in Battle 5, I was a little bit worried, but... Actually, I think how it is on the map is really well done. I don't know what it's been for the Pacific maps, but the visibility in my case has been a lot better. However, I like how the concentrated areas in the map that allow visibility to be a bit more difficult. I don't mind uh, that all too much. What, what I mind is when there's a uh, medium machine gun player laying out in the open on the ground, and I still can't see that player. That's what really bothers me. But I like there being dynamics on the map, like in the case for Pacific Storm, where there can be shrubbery where you can't see players. It alerts me that this is going to be the place where visibility is going to be the poorest, and it does give you kind of that sense of realism that can be there. I don't like it where it's the whole map that I can't see players on, but where there are moments that it is like that, and it gives me an understanding that, hey, when I go on this area, I need to be watching out because it's going to be really hard to see players. I'm really loving the vehicles and guns. I don't think there's been one gun I've used so far where I was like, wow, this gun sucks. They've actually all been pretty impressive and fun to use with some surprises like the Jungle Carbine. We also have other guns that aren't too much of a surprise like the M1 Grand where, I mean, I figured it was going to perform well, but it's just nice to actually see it perform well and be bug free and actually be impactful on the battlefield. I'm enjoying the tanks like the Sherman tank and I still can't get enough of how much fun the Rocket Barrage squad reinforcement tanks have been. I've actually even been playing with the airplanes and you guys all know who've been here for a while that I usually don't play a lot of airplane gameplay for Battlefield, uh, but those have been pretty interesting. Really, the only complaints I've been having so far is that I hope DICE continues to make sure the game works. I really don't want to let up on this because there's still clear performance issues going on in Battlefield 5. On Xbox, we might have been lucky to not have what I would call game-breaking bugs that I was seeing on PS4 with some players getting the stutter bug for them. Uh, there was the disconnection issue that returned again for some players that DICE had to do a fix on. 
And what's concerning to me is now that there's a lot of resurgence of players coming back to Battle 5 and might have missed the months of game-breaking issues we had to deal with, that DICE's focus could get divided here, thinking that we need more customization for Japanese soldiers over making sure Battle 5 works. There's still the issue of being shot around corners that's happening, and it's just confusing on what exactly is going on here. In our patch notes that dropped for the Pacific Theater update, there were fixes to Operation Underground, the last map release, fixing issues like the poor frame rate PC players were experiencing. And I do want to say really quick, because I know people who have been following me will probably begin to sense a theme here of me constantly making... Um, you know, critical claims towards the performance for Battlefield 5, and, and they'll say things like, you know, in every update, there's always going to be bugs, and I agree with that, but I've played plenty of games in the past, and I'd have to say this past year for Battlefield 5 has been one of the buggiest games I've ever played, so in my opinion, I think that demands having more attention to the performance moving forward, not that I don't think that customizations for characters for Battlefield 5 should be added, but if I had to choose, I would much rather not have the stutter bug ruining the gameplay's performance than having customizations because I still think at the end of the day that the gameplay is king. But with all that said, we have some pretty exciting stuff to look forward to. We have the new Wake Island map just around the corner. And then we have the unnamed jungle map set to come out following Wake Island. That's the code name uh, that we don't know quite its real name as of yet. It's like how Tropic Islands was used as the code name for Pacific Storm. So we're still waiting to see what the name and location will be. But I'm betting that this map will probably be an infantry focused map since Wake Island will be another heavy vehicle-centric map playing more like the Pacific Storm with more amphibious tanks and beach landings of sorts. There's also a possible leaked new 64-player game mode coming out in the future centered around resources. The idea is you'll defend your resources like a tank factory where you can spawn tanks or an airfield factory where you can spawn airplanes. Also interesting stuff like you can defend radar stations that can be used to spot enemy players. All while trying to destroy the enemy's resources as well. So it kind of sounds like a conquest mode, but instead of territories, you have these resources you need to protect. All while trying to see which team has more soldiers standing at the end of the round. So a little bit of a mix of a 32 for 32 team deathmatch, but not completely that. Because again, we have all these resources we need to defend and attack. So regardless how it is and ends up, like I like the concept that... DICE is focusing more on these 64 player battles. Honestly, whether it turns out to be a hit or even if it doesn't come out at all, I just like the idea that they're conceiving of these ideas because I think we need more of this in Battlefield, more of EA DICE focusing on what makes Battlefield what it is instead of like picking other games that are out there and trying to implement them into Battlefield. I think focusing on what Battlefield is is the way to go. So I'm looking more forward to seeing new ideas like this come out. Even if they fail, I don't care. I would encourage DICE to keep going down this route. But a lot of good stuff around the corner. It is important to note as I wrap this video up that DICE is continuing these Pacific Theater playlists. And starting this Thursday, November 14th, there will be a combined Breakthrough and Conquest playlist that will be with us until December probably because of the new Wake Island map that will be added during that time and the new Wake Island map will probably have its own breakthrough and uh, conquest playlist for a good week and then after that hopefully it will get added to a permanent Pacific Theater playlist where we can play all three of the new maps. Personally I don't know why it's not possible to add a dedicated breakthrough and conquest playlist that are separate and then having uh, this new conquest breakthrough playlist that is combined i know it might be a little messy on the screen to see three of these playlists that are up there but i don't know personally for me i kind of been enjoying breakthrough a little bit more i know there's players who would prefer to play conquest over breakthrough so it's not the end of the world it's just important that we do have some sort of separate pacific theater playlist because i think a lot of players are just really only interested in playing the pacific theater right now um, the maps just play a lot better in my opinion and there's other unique items that you're just not going to find everywhere else like the battle pickups um the amphibious vehicles and things like that so i think it's really important that dice has a specific playlist that's dedicated to the Pacific Theater, but that's a good rundown on how I've been feeling about the Pacific Theater as of late. Let me know what you guys think has been really awesome for the Pacific Theater or what's been really bad about the Pacific Theater. Hope you guys are having more good times than bad times, but that is it for you guys today. Again, I always appreciate you guys being here. I'm Livin', and I'll catch you guys again later.